What's up everyone, Adam from Cape Crawlers, and today we're gonna rip till we flip with the Texoma RC Slayer build. Josh over at Texoma RC is probably one of my all-time favorite YouTubers. I love his passion and his enthusiasm. He deserves a million subscribers, if anything, for the positive energy that he just radiates with his content and his personality. Aside from that, he's also bringing true innovation to the mini crawler market. And a big part of that is the Texoma RC Slayer chassis kit that he's released. Now the Slayer is an aggressive comp style chassis available in a number of different configurations. He's outfitted this thing with various lengths of skids to accept FCX24, CR18P, and SCX24 components. He's designed custom links, He's got a cage version, a pro version, even some really tricked out steering links that can hold weights and even batteries. Just really cool line of stuff that he's doing and he's really crushing it with his Etsy store. Now I got the cage slayer myself with some accessories and I'm gonna build this based on the SCX24. I am gonna try to put in some different axles, some motor combinations. I think I'm gonna stick with a brushed motor in this one. It's gonna be fun. I'm really excited to try this chassis out. It looks fantastic from the videos that I've seen and the content that Josh has put out. So why don't we jump in and take a look at the components that I got and then we'll kick off the build. So let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look. So I got the Cage Slayer in the two pack set because I wanted the two colors. I wanted the gold and the black because I saw this on Josh's Etsy store and I thought it looked absolutely fantastic. So I got that kit. One of these sets is upgraded to the wider rails and I'll show you the difference in those when we open these bags up. I also got the Slayer Link kit. So this is an optional kit that provides six pairs of links so that you can custom tune your wheelbase to suit your needs and find what best works for your build and what you're looking for. So I got that, it comes with the pivot hardware. We'll have to build these out, but it does come with them. We got some extras here. We got some mag mounts if we wanted to put a body on it, it looks like. I haven't even opened the bag yet and I love the print on these and the fit and finish. Love he's got the rip till you flip acronym printed into these parts, so good. Let's open this up and take a look at the chassis kit. So for the most part, these two kits are identical with the exception of the frame rails. So we have a pair of frame rails here that we're gonna build on. This is the wider version. See, it's nice and wide, almost got like boat skids on the sides here. We have a rear link riser. Again, he's got the Texoma RC star printed in there with the rip till you flip acronym. Love the customization on this kit. I went with the SCX24 skid this is the shorter length. Now there are various different skids that you can pick depending on what you want to do with your chassis. We went with the short SCX24, my cross member in the back. Here's our cage. A few pieces kind of sit on top of it like that. Cool looking kit. I like the look of the Slayer cage. I wouldn't want to put a body on it. I think it looks good without it. And we have a roof right here. So the black piece over here, this is just another kit, same thing but I want to draw attention to the rails because this does have the narrow rails as opposed to the wide ones that I got in the gold kit. So if you look at the difference, significantly wider, thicker, beefier rails with this wide kit. I think I will be using these for my base. So I'm imagining a gold base with a black cage and roof. I'm thinking it would be like that. Kind of cool. Let's take a look at the links real quick. So this comes with a steering link as well. And again, with the steering link, you can choose what rig you want. If you want SCX24 or do you want a CR18P style steering link? Again, I went with the SCX24. Look at the steering link. This is, almost looks like alien spacecraft material. The designs in the shapes of these links. Very innovative approach here. So we've got 12 links all together here of varying lengths. And look at the angle on these. This is crazy. This is going to be a wicked build. I love it. I'd like to mimic the wheelbase of a stretched deadbolt with a C10 front. To me, I feel like that's the best combination for an SCX24. Right, so there you can see, those are our choices here. Steering linkage right there. 
For the rest of the build here, I'm thinking I've got these axles that I took off of Snaggletooth when I did the portal conversion. So I've got straight axles pre-built, kind of ready to go. I've also got CR18P axles that I have from when I did the swap on the T-Hunter to the RC all-wheel drive units. I'd really like to see if I could get these CR18P portals on here. I'm not sure if I have a steering linkage that'll fit though. But that might be an option too. For a motor, I mentioned sticking with the brushed motor. I think I might try to sneak in this RC all-wheel drive 180 brushed combo here because it's got the aluminum transmission with the metal gears. This is a nice, smooth, torquey motor. I'm thinking this might be a good option here for this build. So I'm going to start assembling the chassis here. And I'll circle back with you guys at key points throughout the process and also when I make up my mind on a drivetrain for this thing. So let's get into it. So I think I've got a plan for the build here. Let me show you what I'm thinking. I'm going to stick with the brushed motor, that big brushed motor from RC all-wheel drive. I'm going to run it with the Lizard Pro and the FlySky GT5 setup. I've got some Endura comp pin tires on MoFo RC deep dish wheels straight axles again. I'm going to use the Mighty Chihuahua Servo. I can run that at 8.4 volts with the Lizard, which is another reason why I wanted to pick that. Got the Mofo RC best servo mount ever. I'm going to need that for that big servo. Dug up some Power Hobby shocks. I can't remember what length these are. They're pretty big, so we'll see how those work. I'm also going to try some Endura underdrive gears. So I got these underdrive gears I'm going to put in front and back. I really want to try to get that brushless performance with the brushed motor, and I think we can do it with this combo. So this is the tentative setup. Best laid plans. We'll see how they work out. So I'm going to get into the installation. We'll see how it goes. All right, my friends, let me show you where I'm at. So I got the motors mounted on the skid. I got my links on here. So the links, it's important to pay attention when you put the links together because as I understand it, it looks like they're notched out on the outside so that you're able to pull them apart and they don't bind or catch on anything of the skid. Same thing with the front. These longer links too, they've got mounting positions on here for rear shocks. If you want to run these as kind of a trailing arm setup, you can do that as well. So I kind of use these as an indicator which links go where. So I've got my lower links here. The bend is closest to the skid so that when you're going up over obstacles, you've got that good ground clearance there. That nice bend is going to get you up and over rocks and glide over things as you're moving along. So the next step is we're going to put this onto the rails. So I've got the rails kind of mocked up here. Experimenting with my colors, I think I'm going to do, I've got this black piece up here. I'm going to do a black cage. I might switch this piece to black, I don't know. But I like how the gold looks, so I'm kind of leaning towards this look right here. So you got to do the links, you got to do your lower links first because they are hidden behind the rails. So once you get your skid in there, you're not going to be able to access your lower links. So that's why you do this place first. And now we're just going to pop this in. So I'm going to tighten this up and then we'll move on to the next steps, probably assembling the cage, tighten everything up. And then we'll start putting the axles and things together. So now we're making progress. All right, guys, so I got the cage on here. And then I realized as I was assembling that my RC all wheel drive motor is too big, if you can see. This tray up here in the front is pressing down on the motor and pressing up on the tray, which is causing a lot of issues here. So unfortunately, going to have to yank the big motor out. This plane isn't going to work. I'm going to have to make a pivot. What I'm going to do instead is drop in this little guy racing parts 50 turn Predator motor. Still has good amount of torque, good amount of wheel speed. So hopefully this should work pretty well. This should be a direct bolt in with plenty of room inside the cage. So I'm going to make this swap now and then we'll start assembling everything else.
Making progress, my friends. Here we are, almost at a full roller set here. I got to put the suspension on. This was a tough kit, not mechanically. It was really challenging just because of how many options I had for linkage, lengths, placements, all of that. There's just so much customization here and so many options that Josh has given you. I really waffled back and forth and struggled to make decisions on this, but ultimately I think I've got it to where I think it's good. It's got a long wheelbase on it, which I was hoping to accomplish. It's longer than I expected. It's got the longest links in the back and the second longest in the front. And I put this all together and then I was really worried that I didn't have a drive shaft set to fit, but thankfully I got a Gladiator rear and C10 front. The front is just barely hanging on there, but if I tune the shock so I don't get an extreme amount of drop, I think I should be okay. But it's looking pretty cool. I like the gold and black contrast. The Little Guy Racing Parts motor fit perfectly in there. Now I've got room for my battery. I'm going to slide my battery in the front here. For the electronics, I think I might try to stick them possibly on the roof inside, or I've got room over here. I could probably just kind of tuck them inside the cage here if I have to. But I'm, I'm pretty stoked with how this is turning out. I'm going to be able to keep the weight up front and down low. So next steps I'm going to put so next steps I'm going to put the shocks on. I'm going to find a spot for my shocks. I'm a little concerned that the shocks that I have these might be too long but we'll see. I've got variety if I need to change it out. But that's the next step. So we'll do the shocks then we'll start putting wheels and tires on and then we'll boot this thing up when we get all the electronics on. So we're getting close, so I'm going to dive back in and keep going. Check this thing out. We are almost done. I just gotta attach the cage to the side here. I'm gonna put my electronics in on the roof, I'm thinking is what I'm gonna do, probably like right up in here. But this is pretty much the roller as it is right now. Pretty cool setup, isn't it? I love how it's stretched. I love the stance. The thing is so gnarly looking. So I ended up swapping, I did four or five different shot combinations to get this thing where I wanted it. I still think the shocks are too long, but what I did end up doing was just putting on this little guy racing parts limiting strap in the front. So hopefully that helps control front end lift, but still gives me, oh my goodness, look at this thing. It's got a lot of articulation. I wasn't expecting that. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't build it to flex, but man, this thing is crazy. The comp pins on here, I think this looks fantastic. They almost envelop the chassis with how these tires are and how tall they are. And I think the profile of them really matches the build. Super happy with them. Again, these got the Flub RC inserts in them. This is gonna be a deadly combination, I think. I got a lot of weight in the front. I'm anxious to get this on the scales to see what my weight distribution is. So next steps, let's get the electronics in here and then we'll do some baseline tests. I want to fire it up, make sure everything's good. We're gonna put it on the scales, put it on the setup table, see what our numbers are, and then we're gonna run this thing. So we're almost there, super pumped.
let's check out the RTI on this bad boy. I know this is going to max out the ramp, but let's give it a shot anyway. It doesn't quite max it out like I thought it would, actually. Maybe it just appears as though it flexes more than it does. I'd say 22 on the RTI. Next up, let's do some side hill. Here we go. Forty, fifty, fifty-five, fifty-nine 50, 59 degrees on the side hill. Okay, let's try the vertical. You know, I've been struggling with my setup table on the verticals, but let's give it a shot anyway. So kind of take these results with a grain of salt. I'm expecting it to slide off the table before we get an accurate measurement. Yeah, not even, we got about 55 degrees before it lost it on the table. It's for the heck of it to see if we can dump it over backwards how far we need to go. At 75, the thing is still standing practically vertical at this point. Eighty degrees. I mean, it is almost. At, this is nuts. Like eighty-four degrees. This. Yeah, 80, about 84 degrees before I can dump it over backwards, but take that as you will. I don't know how accurate that is, but still very impressive. The thing can stand practically vertical. Okay, here we go. Here's the Slayer on the course. I am blown away by how well the Little Guy Racing Parts brush motor works with the Lizard Ultimate. I mean, this is just incredibly slow and controlled power by this thing. I thought I was going to be bummed out and miss the brushless motor that I usually do in all my crazy builds, but man, this thing is close. And can we talk about the stance of this thing? My goodness, this thing is gorgeous looking. It is so slammed and so planted. Quick work of the canyon there. I want to try another line. Definitely would like to get more steering angle there, especially on the right. I have hardly anything to mess with my endpoints and my setup here to see if I can correct that. Oh man, there's that vertical climbing at work right there. Super impressive. I just can't get over how this thing sits. I mean, the body sits below the tires. It's crazy looking. I thought I might have put the steering links on backwards, but I can't get it. It doesn't fit over my diff cover the other way around. Let's get into our challenge lines here. Let's head over to the escalator now. I'm excited to see how this thing does. Whoa, missing the wheel speed of the brushless motor. Still able to get up over that gatekeeper pretty easy though. Oh man, this thing's a weapon. We just crushed the escalator. Let's try the chute just for the heck of it. Flat as a pancake up there. And now Hell's Gate, this should be awesome. 
Oh man, no problem at all. This thing could be the new most capable truck that we have in the arsenal. Just incredible. Look at that, I was a little worried with the heavy front bias with the weight, but on that descent, no problem at all. It just crawls like a spider around here. Look at it move. The articulation is great. Link action is nice and smooth. I am mighty impressed for first pass with this thing. It's my first time having it on the course and it is doing very, very well. Oh, it's so cool looking. Wow, mighty impressive. All right, I could play on here for hours, but I'm gonna wrap this up. I wanna get it out on the rocks. I'm gonna see what this thing is really capable of. I'm gonna get it back on the bench and give you my final thoughts. The Slayer build, we came, we saw, we ripped till we flipped. This thing is awesome. I am in love with this build. It could be my new most favorite comp build. I think it's a fair assumption. I love how it looks. I'm normally not a huge fan of the raw cage, especially 3D printed, but the way the cage looks on this thing and the appearance and the flow of the lines, it's got a very organic feel to it. So I really, I love how it looks. I am obsessed with how low it sits. It is just slammed. And with the big comp pins on it, that actually sit taller than the entire chassis in a lot of places just gives it such a menacing and gnarly look to it. I am just in love with the setup on this thing, which is mighty impressive considering this was my total first pass at it. Just set it up on the bench, what I thought looked good on the bench, and this is what came of it. So I'm very impressed and I can only imagine what I'm gonna be able to get out of it for performance when I start actually messing with shock placements, linkage placements, things like that. So just an incredible setup here. I'm very impressed. What I ended up doing for my electronics, so I stuck the Lizard Ultimate on the roof. Same thing with the Fly Sky GT5 receiver, stuck that on the roof as well. And then just kind of wedged the battery in there towards the front. It's not ideal, everything fits though. And it looks okay. I've got some wires kind of hanging out here. The battery kind of hangs out on the driver's side, which I thought might be an issue for weight distribution, but it's not. It's nearly 50-50 side to side. And probably because the brushed motor is offset to the passenger side. So the slight overhang of the battery probably counteracts the offset from the motor. So all in all, the weight distribution on this is pretty impressive. It's 65% front, 35 rear. So very front heavy and with the long wheelbase, that we're able to get with the links provided from Texoma. This thing can climb near vertical. It's just amazing what this thing can climb. The only thing it kind of suffers with with that long wheelbase is the brake hover because it is so low and so long. I found myself just kind of getting high centered quite a bit. But man, this thing would, would bite off a lot more than it could chew for sure. It would get up over lines so impressively vertical but just couldn't complete the line because I couldn't get the brake over. And with the brushed motor, I just didn't have the wheel speed to really kind of bump myself up and over there. But nonetheless, I am thrilled with the power plant. The Little Guy Racing Parts 50 turn motor paired with the Lizard Ultimate. My gosh, it feels like a brushless motor. I mean, the, the torque and the low speed control of this thing is, is wild. So, and I'm thrilled with that. That was a very pleasant surprise. I did run into a little bit of trouble with the links. I broke a couple links trying to press the hardware in. That could very well have been my fault being too rough with these things. I did see on Texoma's channel actually to heat up the pivot balls with a lighter and then press them through gently. I wish I would have caught that sooner, but I did use that towards the end and it worked much better. So these 
3D printed links. Just have to be gentle pushing through the pivot hardware. Don't manhandle it like me because I ended up breaking a couple of them. They're still holding on. It was just kind of the outer edges of the link that ended up breaking. Otherwise, the kit, the quality of the kit, very, very strong. Feels very good. Out there on the rocks, pounding it around, hitting things hard. Didn't have any issues with any of the 3D printed components whatsoever. So overall, I'm thrilled with the kit. I'm so excited I got to try it. It is everything I thought it would be and more. Slayer is an appropriate name for it because it just slays all the lines that you throw in front of it. It looks fantastic, goes together really well. Lots of customization for a variety of different models, SCX, FCX, CR18P. You get lots of options for all of them, which is fantastic. So an extremely versatile, great performing kit. Well done, Josh, I gotta say. But let me know your thoughts down below. What do you think of the Slayer chassis? And I'll put the links in the description for the Texoma RC Etsy store where he sells all the components to build this. I'll also link down Josh's YouTube channel. Make sure you check him out, show him some love and subscribe to his channel if you haven't already. As always, I appreciate your time. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so. And also check out our merch store. I'll link it below. We just dropped a whole bunch of new shirts, tanks, a whole bunch of good stuff if you want to go check it out. Thanks again. I will see you in the next video.